So, welcome to my second video. It is me demonstrating another pet portrait. This one looks to be like a light brown, almost pinkish brown uh, Pomeranian. And uh, working with watercolors, it's always nice to kind of layer in these different colors and hues. So even though it's going to be a brown puppy in the end, I'm actually putting in pinks, yellows, and purples right now. Uh, you know, I, this is not going to be the final color of the dog, because if you ever do find a Pomeranian that's pink, yellow, and purple, do let me know, because I'm sure <laughs> it's going to be a very popular puppy. I don't know how healthy it'll be, but it'll be very colorful and very popular, I'm sure. So putting in this under painting, uh, it's really working with the beauty of watercolors, because most watercolor pigments are transparent. And so when you kind of lay down one wash, or you lay down one layer of color, uh, what you're going to get when you lay down the second layer of color is your your colors do tend to be uh, more interesting, there's going to be more texture, and so this is going to be, in the end, a brown puppy that has purple undertone in some places, pink undertones in some places, maybe more yellow undertones in some places. Uh, it's just going to add up to lots more interesting browns to look at, and you, you know, you you even though it's a very simple subject, it's a puppy, um, it's putting in these kind of extra unexpected colors. It's just another way uh, to kind of please the eye, give the viewer something really nice to look at that's unexpected. It's like, do I really see purple in there? But it looks brown. Um, but really, if you look very closely at most photographs, there are always these very subtle casts to what you think are, you know, straightforward colors like gray and brown. So. Uh, for some strange reason, I really love kind of working with neutral colors in this way because they're never just completely neutral. Uh, there's always some underpainting involved. So after my first wash, this is now in fact the second wash that I'm working on, and I'm definitely putting in the hints of the longer fur over the chest of the puppy. And now I really am, you know, bringing in the browns. And what I'm using here is raw umber. Again, I love raw umber as a brown. And uh, because the fur around the face is a little bit more reddish, I'm actually using uh, burnt sienna around the face. So a bit of raw umber, a bit of burnt sienna, and because of the poofiness, the extreme fuzziness of this puppy, um, you know, using a lot of uh, blending in terms of putting in water onto the onto the paper first, and then when you by the time you put your pigment in, uh, you actually have very soft edges. And if I don't have my edges soft enough, I'm actually just doing a little bit of rubbing out with a piece of tissue paper. So there we go, kind of putting in the fur texture right now. And of course I'm going to be working on the body and really defining the body, uh, the curves in the body as well, and most of the detail is going to be in the face, which I'll be getting to in a bit, but right now it's kind of fun to do the little feet and toes, as you can see. So I am completing, uh, you know, the, the the legs on this puppy before I move on to actually filling in the face. And this time, really getting like the browns into the face. It's not gonna look like alien, you know, pink and purple puny puppy anymore. But it's starting to look, you know, like a brown puppy. So this is me carefully adding the browns into the face. And I think I mentioned before that the face is more reddish brown in color. And so I'm using a burnt sienna, and this is really now um, reflecting the, the real color in the puppy. So I'm very happy with that, that I'm getting this into my second layer. Uh, really slowly and with a lot of movement and brush so that you can actually see the texture of the fur. And this is why, again, I think watercolors are so brilliant for working with, because it's all in the brush technique, it's all in the timing. Uh, it's all the brush and the papers you use as well, and maybe in future I'll actually talk about that if I'm doing an instructional video, but you know, this is just a demonstration, and you can see you know, the browns are coming in, they're, they're just slightly covering you know, the, the pink and the purple underpainting. And uh, if I were to show you the photograph, it would actually show the face of the puppy being the darkest spot on the puppy as well, so I really have to get my browns in at this point. And so using a lot of burnt sienna because the face of the puppy is more reddish brown. And now I'm starting to work uh, on the back legs, which are also kind of a bit darker, kind of reddish brown again. 
And it really takes very little work once the underpainting is there. You can see that once I put the brown in, uh, the underpainting has lent the purple tones in and a bit of the shading in and a bit of the shaping in as well. And at this point, I'm going to start working on the face. I'm filling in those dark little details. So for watercolors, most people do like to work from light to dark. And now I'm really filling in the darkest parts of the face and it really helps to establish the full range of values in the painting. At this point, it starts, it always starts looking like a real puppy, like a real doggy, and you've got the light parts in, the middle, the, the, the medium parts in, and the darkest parts in. So at this point, I'm starting to work on the puppy's tongue, and this was a really good photo because it really clearly showed a very pink tongue with purple uh, kind of shadows on the tongue. And so maybe, you know, using pink and purple as the underpainting on the puppy wasn't quite so outlandish because the puppy did have those colors on the tongue as well. Now the nose, it is black, but I'm not using any blacks in my paintings. I usually don't do that. And I'm just using very strong browns, very strong purples in order to get the, the, the nose painted. And so it is now uh, time to work on the final layer and the final details on the painting. Again, getting that brown on the face to be closer to where it needs to be, uh, to really kind of uh, reflect the photograph I'm working with. And I have kind of moved on to my finer brush. It is actually a mid-sized brush. <laughs> um, the, the, the thing about working with a mid-sized brush is it still carries some water, but it has that fine tip. And now I am adding the longer fur on the body of the puppy. So this is really like the, the, finishing, the finishing touches now. I'm making sure the dark areas are as dark as they need to be. And of course, you know, the face always getting the most attention. Making sure like the dark, uh, the dark furs on the face are getting reflected in the painting as well. And some dogs for some reason always look like they have eyebrows. This one has a little bit of that effect, or at least uh, this puppy seems to have eye shadow. So again, more detail on the face, more detail around the mouth, around the nose. This is some place that I actually check uh, very closely when I'm doing the pencil drawing just to make sure I get the face right. It's a lot like doing a, a human portrait because dogs really do have different faces. Uh, it's not just their identifying marks that really set them apart. So we are nearing the end of this painting and right before I kind of finish recording uh, you will see me kind of taking uh, care of final details of the fur around the body. You know, as I mentioned, this is a very, very fuzzy, puffy, uh, pu fuzzy, poofy puppy. And uh, I'm going to be adding like final, like hard edges, kind of long streaks of fur with my fine brush. All these final details going in. So I've got that dark. Uh, face in the painting already and his little feet also have to be darkened. So that's going in right now and again this is always kind of the last uh, layer I put in because a lot of browns do wind up being very opaque. I have to be very careful to really use them at the last stage of the painting otherwise you've got this thing in watercolor painting called mud and uh, that's what I'm trying to avoid. Uh, it's very easily avoided by using the opaque and sedimentary colors last in the painting. Yeah, I'm probably going to do an instructional video in the future. So there's me fini finishing up the little toesies. I'm going to do some kind of uh, fuzzies around the size of the puppy as well. And then this will be the end of my second YouTube video. So thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. You get to see this done in 10 minutes, which is a fraction of the time it actually took. But <laughs> that's what you hire me for. Thank you. Bye-bye.